So for my function, I'm going to grab this guy right here. I'm going to call it f of x. Great. Graphing a function, please. Okay. Next step. Pick two points on your function. Any two points that you would like. Love it. Seeing lots of exotic functions. So I said pick two points. Okay, here's a point, here's a point. I'm going to call this first one x equals a. I'm going to call this next one x equals b. You picked a boring function, that's okay. <laughs> next, I want you to please connect, um, sorry, create a secant line. Secant line. We've heard that word before. What does that mean? It tells you that two points. Two points. Two points. I want you to create a secant line. This is why you have a ruler that connects those two points. Secant line that connects those two points. No ruler left for me. Okay. That's right. No ruler left for me. All right. So your secant line might look something like that. Okay. If I asked you to find the slope of the secant line, what would we do? Rise over run. You would do rise over run, but with these variables, what would you write? Change in y over change in x. You'd write change in y over change in x. I would hope that we would write something more along the lines of f of b minus f of a over b minus a, right? This is, I've picked a function, I've picked two points, I've connected these two points with the secant line. I know how to find the slope of the secant line. I want you to see, are there any points in between A and B where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line? <clears throat> Let me say that again. You've, you've graphed a function. You've got a starting point. You've got an ending point. You've made a secant line. Are there any points on your curve where the tangent line is parallel to said another way, has the same slope as your secant line. I'll let you play around with that. Can you find any places where the tangent line has the same slope as the secant line? You're going to have to eyeball it. You don't actually have a name for the function, right? I mean, you can use your ruler. If you think you can use your ruler in a clever way, that's great. So, for example, let's see. Here's my secant line. And if I hold my secant line parallel, I'm looking for a place where the tangent line is parallel, like, uh, I should have done that in advance, like right here. Would you guys agree that for my curve, that tangent line has the same slope as the secant line? Okay, so that happens here. Look on your graph if that happens. It's possible that this happens on your graph once. <coughs> if I'm looking really carefully at my graph, not only do I have a tangent line parallel to the secant line over here, but if I push that line up, there's another one right over here. So I've got two different places. How many guys found at least one? I've got two. Okay. How many guys found two? Okay. okay, where are the folks that have found at least one time where this happens? One more time. Anybody not find a place where this happens? Okay, so 20 people, 21 counting me, just created 21 different functions, selected different endpoints, created a secant line, and all 21 of us found at least one place where the tangent line has the secant line. We're okay? So you might think that this is something that always happens. I want you to try some different functions, see if you can come up with an example of a place where this fails. I'll give you a couple minutes.
try some other functions, try some other endpoints. The goal is to see, can you come up with a function where this doesn't happen? Go for it. <coughs> And then one uh, you're looking for we pick the two points to represent the endpoints of the sequence. Then you're looking to see is there a place where the tangent line is parallel to the sequence? That would be the tangent. Not a propeller. Not a propeller. Bad things happen to propeller people. <laughs> Good thinking, Jose. You already found it? Oh, you like going to the hotel? Go up. Up. Go all the way? No, I ain't right here. But like to the five. Right here. Anybody find a counter example? Anybody find a function where this doesn't work? David, do you think you found one? <coughs> okay, so David's recommending this guy over here. So you've got a function. Have you picked endpoints? Um, no. Okay, what I'm looking for is a function and the points where this doesn't work. That's what everyone is working on. Anything else happening? Not going to go well. Looking for a counterexample or evidence that this always works. What you got? No, look. <laughs> Okay, Marvin's example. Okay. If I could interrupt the conversation just for a second, let's look at Marvin's example. Does that work? No. Is this an example of a function where you've picked two points, you've created a secant line, and you can't find a tangent line with the same flow? You can. You can just go down. No, but it would be point. No. You need to create a function. You need to pick two points. You need to make the secant. He's done all of that. The question for you all is, is there a point where the tangent line will have the same slope yes. as that secant line? Yes. For all of you that are saying yes, let's get some hands on this, where? Where does that point exist? Jasmine, where does that point exist? At the cusp point. You think at the cusp point. So you're saying if I take my ruler and I slide it down, if I slide it down, you're saying at the cusp point, the tangent line has the same slope as the secant line. That's what you're saying? How many guys agree with Jasmine? I agree. No one wants to disagree. Nobody wants to disagree. No one remembers anything about the slope at a cusp point. Nor what do you know? Okay, so I'm hearing that the slope at a cusp point is zero. I have a problem with that. The slope at a cusp point doesn't exist. So if for this function right here and those two points, if I connect them with the secant line, do I have a point where the tangent line has the same slope? No. So this would be a great counterexample to keep in mind. Another one, if David had finished off his thought, David, you had a function that looks something like this, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. What if I had picked these two points right here and made a secant line? Slope of that secant line? Zero. Zero. 
is there going to be a place where the tangent line has the same slope? No. no. Yeah, of course not. Is there a place where the tangent line has the exact same slope? I'm hearing horizontal tangent line. Well, horizontal tangent line, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to leveling off, but I'm not actually leveling off. I'm not getting a slope of zero. So another counterexample. Let's put the rulers away. We're done with the rulers, but thank you very much. I need to give this back to Marvin. Thank you very much. Here, we'll give him one of yours. And let's look at the mean value there. The mean value theorem, I'll just, I want to get out there in front, in front of traffic. <coughs> the mean value theorem is going to be that named theorem. We are going to come back to this several times over the course of the year because this is not something a lot of folks get right the first time through. So stay big brain. Anytime you've got a theorem with a name, it is going to be important and it comes with conditions. So here's what the mean value theorem says. Okay, mean value theorem says that if I have a function that is two things, continuous on the closed interval, everybody knows what that means, right? Continuous means? You don't have to keep the chance. Besides Ron Beer, Eunice, what does it mean? You know, okay, so if we go back to like the eighth grade definition, right, no offense. The eighth grade definition says I can draw it without picking my pencil off the paper. The calculus version? Okay, the function is defined, the limits exist, all the good things. But continuous just means for us no holes, no jumps, what else? No breaks. No breaks, what else? No. One more thing. No holes, no jumps, no breaks. No vertical asymptotes. Cusp points are continuous. No vertical asymptotes. So if you have a function that is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, differentiable just means derivative. continuous and derivative exists. <clears throat> and derivative exists. So if you have both conditions, then there's going to be a value of c such that this is true. f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If your function is continuous on the closed interval, no holes, no jumps, no breaks, no vertical asymptotes, and differentiable on the open interval, so smooth, the derivative exists, then this expression on the right, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, just means mm, secant, right? And this guy over here, f prime of c, means your derivative. Said another way? Another way to say the derivative? It's the slope. It's the slope of the tangent line. What the mean value theorem promises you is that if you have a function that is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, you will always find a place, C, in between A and B where the slope of the secant is equal to the slope of the tangent line, which is exactly what we just did. We started with the function. And what did I ask you to do? After we made the function? You picked two points. After you did the two points? You made a, be specific. You connected them with a? With a ruler, yes. But more calculus specific, you made a secant line. We found the slope of the secant line. That's this guy over here. Did everybody find a place where the tangent line had the same slope? Yeah. No, not David. Did every, the first time we yeah, all did, we did. Yeah. but did we always find a place? No. 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 There were two examples. One of them was that absolute value graph. Is that function continuous? <laughs> the absolute value graph. Yes. Yeah. Continuous? Yes. Differentiable? No. No. So that function didn't satisfy the criteria. The next one we looked at was what, 1 over x squared? <clears throat> Continuous? Nope. No. Those functions are going to fail the mean value theorem. This is all the mean value theorem says. Have a quick conversation with somebody near you. What are the conditions and what's the promise? Those are the conversations I want to hear. What are the conditions that have to be true and what's the promise? 
So it's basically that there's another two points in the graph. There's two, two places where the slope are the same. No. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna bank on you guys. Okay. So, it just has to say that. Uh, <coughs> My friend Jennifer Ortega, what's the first condition? All right, you, if you want to take differentiable, we'll take differentiable. Differentiable on the open interval or the closed interval? Look at your notes. Differentiable on the open interval or differentiable on the closed interval? Go back and read the definition one more time. It says that the function has to be differentiable. Reading the thing in front of you would be really helpful since this isn't a guess. Uh, over an interval, specifically an open interval. They're using parentheses, so we're not including the endpoints. Condition number one, you need to be differentiable on an open interval. Condition number two. <coughs> condition number two. Hello, Daisy. Uh, so you can on the closed interval. But not it. We're going to use. The, we're going to say the function. The function has to be continuous on the closed interval. So, like, give me your bear claws, right? Like, continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. Then there's a promise. The promise is when I find the slope of the secant line connecting those two points, there will be exactly one place where the tangent line is equal to, has the same slope as the secant line? At least. At least one. This is called an existence theorem. An existence theorem, just like the intermediate value theorem, was an existence theorem. The intermediate value theorem, the function had to be continuous. You had one endpoint that was, had a positive value. One endpoint was a negative value. You always had a root somewhere in between. You didn't necessarily know where, but the idea is that this C value that I'm looking at is somewhere in between my values of A and B. What I want to do, we're just going to jump into a problem. Let's, let's go from there. Okay. All right. So. For those of you that like checklists and like a process to follow, at the top of page two, one is there for you. We're not going to worry about that too terribly much. But for my I want a process person, you've got it. Here's what the problems are going to look like. For this first function, f of x equals 5x minus 4 over x on the closed interval, negative 4, negative 1. You need to either find the value of C promised by the mean value theorem or tell me that the mean value theorem cannot be applied. <coughs> so let's see, can I apply the MVT? First thing that I need to check for? Continuity. continuity. Is F continuous on the interval negative 4, negative 1? Looking at that function, you should know the answer already. I picked a friendly function. Is this function continuous? Yeah. <clears throat> Look at that function one more time. I picked a friendly function, something that I thought most of you would be able to look at right away and know whether it's continuous or not. Yes. Yes, it is continuous. Yeah. This function has a problem. This function has a problem. Jennifer, where does this function have a problem? The, um, the denominator is just x. The denominator is just x. Where is this function not going to be continuous? Zero. It's not continuous at zero. Right? f of x is not continuous at x equals zero. Any other places? Nope. Oh my goodness. 5x minus 4 over x. <coughs> Infinity is not a number. Infinity, we'd be talking about the endpoint. Is there any other place where this function would fail to be continuous? No. The answer should be no. There's no other problems. Dividing by 0 is your only problem. So my function is not continuous at x equals 0, but is continuous everywhere else. So my question to you all is, 
is this function continuous from negative 4 to negative 1? Yes! Is this function continuous? Just dial back a little bit. Is this function continuous from negative 4 to negative 1? Yeah. Because? Because it's only it's not continuous, only at. The only place where we have a continu the continuity issue is at x equals 0. Is that in this interval? No. So I'd say, therefore, continuous on the interval negative 4, negative 1. First condition satisfied. Now we're going for the next one. Second question is, is the function differentiable? Is the function differentiable on negative 4, negative 1? You're going to answer that question by telling me, can I find the derivative? Can I evaluate the derivative at all the places between negative 4 and negative 1? Go find that derivative. On the derivative using the quotient rule. Low d high minus high d low, low, low. Cleaned it up a little bit and I simplified to 4 over x squared. How many guys get to 4 over x squared? Okay. Does this derivative exist? Mm -hmm. yeah. This derivative exists everywhere except zero. at x equals 0. But good news, x equals 0 not in the interval that I care about. So I could say f prime of x exists everywhere, ooh, everywhere, except at x equals 0. Therefore, differentiable on negative 4, negative 1. We've got a continuous function on the closed interval. We've got a differentiable function on the open interval. Good news, therefore, the MVT applies. Before we go any further, any questions from anybody? The, the proof part, the proof of the continuity and the differentiability is probably going to be where you have to do the most amount of work. You've got to make sure continuous on the closed interval. You've got to make sure differentiable on the open interval. Any questions from anybody? We're good? Okay, not done. Not done. All that we've done with the work so far is shown that we can use the MVT. That I can use the mean value there. Now you actually have to go about the work of figuring out what's the value of C that's guaranteed. So now the goal, <coughs> find C. The way I'm going to find C, we're going to find F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Well, for this problem, f of b means plug in negative 1. f of a, plug in negative 4. Divide by negative 1 minus negative 4. So I need f of negative 1 minus f of negative 4 divided by negative 1 minus negative 4. f of negative 1, I'm just going to plug in negative 1. 5 times negative 1, what is that, negative 5? Minus 4, we get negative 9. Divided by negative 1 is positive 9. Minus f of negative 4. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Minus 4 is negative 24. Divided by negative 4 is 6. I've got 9 minus 6 over negative 1 plus 4. I've got 3 over 3 is equal to 1. Please make sure I'm not lying to you on that. For those of you that are like, I've got to be done at this point. I've already proved continuity. I've proved differentiability. One must be the answer. The biggest mistake anyone is going to make is thinking that one's the answer. One's not the answer. What does the one represent? The one represents 
slope of secant line. What we're looking for is a value of c where my derivative has that slope, or my derivative is equal to that value. So to wrap this up, what I need is for 4 over x squared, my derivative, need my derivative to be equal to 1. If 4 over x squared is equal to 1, I know I'm in a room full of fraction killers. Multiply by x squared, 4 is equal to x squared. If I solve this correctly using my Algebra 2 skills, what are we going to get? Hopefully you're going to get x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. So how many solutions? Two. One. Two. One. 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 Right. The mean value theorem says if I have a function that's continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, I'm going to find at least one inside the interval. Which one's inside the interval? This guy here is your value of C. This guy here is outside the interval. So it's not a solution. All right, see what you can do with the second one. conversation happening at most of the tables. <coughs> Can I use the mean value theorem? No. No. Because? It's not it's in the, on the interval. Right. If I look at this function, you know that this function has a problem. Daisy, where's the problem for this function? Okay, when the denominator is equal to zero, where's the denominator equal to zero? At x equals negative one. Now, this function had a problem at x equals 0, but this guy has a function at x equals negative 1, and what's different is that that value of negative 1 is inside the interval. So what I'd, lo what I'd love to see written down is this. Since f is not continuous at, what do we say, x equals negative 1? So I'd say something like, therefore, f is not continuous on negative 4, negative 1. As soon as you know one of the conditions has failed you, right, the function's not continuous, therefore, the MVT does not apply. And if you can't use the MVT, don't go any further. You're not going to move on to proving differentiability and checking the slope of the secant line. As soon as you know one of your two conditions fails, get out. Yes, sir? Negative two to two. Um, apparently, I'm a big fan of negative four to negative one. Yeah, thank you. From negative two to positive two. Everybody okay? <laughs> All right, I want to give you guys five minutes. See what you can do with these next two problems. One of them, you will have to go all the way through with the mean value theorem. You're going to check continuity. You're going to check differentiability. You're going to find the slope. You're going to go all the way through. We're talking five.
polynomial. Things are really nice for polynomials, so it's continuous. Check. Does the derivative exist? Did you find the derivative? 2x squared. 2x squared? No, 2x. We have 3x squared. Label this. Label this as your derivative. Does the derivative exist? Mm -hmm. Right. So your function is continuous on the closed interval. The function is differentiable on the open interval. That's the green line. You can keep going. Up. Find the slope of the secant line. Then go find the value of C. <coughs>
Okay, so if all goes well, and I think most folks have it at this point, you know you've got a polynomial, a nice friendly function, no denominators, no square roots, nothing crazy. F is continuous on negative one to one because F is a polynomial. You're gonna have to back up your explanation. Second, I found the derivative. Does that derivative exist all the time from negative one to one? Yes. Absolutely, because it's also a polynomial, so the derivative exists. The MBT applies. The next thing, you're gonna say, what's F of one minus what's F of negative one over one minus negative one? The significance of this calculation that's the slope of your secant line. Right, f of one, we've got one minus one, is that negative two? Minus f of negative one. Negative one minus one, that's negative two, plus two, I think that's zero. Maybe that's getting negative two minus zero over one minus negative one. Abraham, are you okay? <laughs> f of negative one, negative one cubed, minus negative one squared. Minus two times negative one should be zero. So you've got negative two over two, which is negative one. Negative one isn't the goal. Negative one represents the slope of your secant line. So finally, you're gonna say, all right, so I need f prime, which is three x squared minus two x minus two. I need to know where that's equal to negative one. I can add one to both sides. I can factor. For the folks that factored it, did I factor that correctly? Yeah. That works? So my solutions are x equals negative one third or x, equal, x equals one. How many answers? Don't jump so quickly. How many answers? How many answers inside the interval that you're interested in? If you go back to the mean value theorem, the statement of the mean value theorem on the front page, I picked this problem for a reason. There's something really special about the value of C. I won't tell you, I'll give you a moment to flip the page over, Mariah, to page one. What do you know about C? I'll wait till we get some hands on this. What do you know about C? I see one, I see two, I see three, I see four, I see five. I'm going to wait for a few more folks. What's so special about C, Abraham? It's not equal to either one of these. It has to be inside the interval. So how many solutions? One. Just one. This guy here is an endpoint. We don't like endpoints when it comes to the mean value theorem. This guy here is the value of C. No surprise, I found at least one. Could there be more than one? Absolutely, there could be more than one. All right, second one. Absolute value of x minus three on the interval zero comma six. Is that function continuous? Think about that graph in your head. Does that work? Yeah. That works. Is it differentiable? No. Because? You've got a cusp point, right? You've got a cusp point where? The graph of the absolute value of x minus 3 is the graph of the absolute value of x shifted right three spaces. The graph looks like this. Okay. Take a minute on your own. Finish the write-up. What do you know? What do you know?
So I think Nora's got a good write up here. We've got the graph, F is continuous on 0, 6. I can see that. This is a friendly graph. F prime. No, I cross out. Okay, F cross out. Nobody can say F is not differentiable on 0, 6 because it has a cusp point. But let's be more specific. Where's there a cusp point? At x, x equals 3. At x equals 3. Therefore, MVT does not apply. Done. You're out. You're done. This is how it's going to work. The write-ups are long because you've got to worry about continuity and you've got to worry about differentiability. And there's a lot of just algebra work that you need to do at the end. But the nice thing with these mean value theorem problems, they all just kind of follow the same flavor. They follow the same recipe. As long as you show me both conditions. First condition? Continuous. continuous be more specific. Continuous. Closed interval. Second condition? Differentiable. Differentiable on the open interval. And if that's true, then there will be exactly one point. At least one point where the tangent line has the same slope as the secant line inside the interval. Don't include the endpoints. That's it. All right, for those of you that are feel, feeling really good with this, Nora, let me give this back to you. I want you to go solo for the next couple of minutes on problem number three. For those of you that want to go one more with me, we're going to do problem number three again. <coughs> Where are the folks that are doing number three with me? I see Marvin, I see Daisy. Okay. I, 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 I see Marvin and I see Martyr. Golly. Just going to hope for schedule changes next semester. <coughs> All right. For the folks that are with me, what's your first move? Is it continuous? Is this function continuous? So step one, is g continuous on that interval negative pi to pi? Is it continuous? If I look at it in yeah. pieces, y equals x, that's a, that's a line. That's continuous. Sine of x, familiar function? Also continuous, right? So I would just say yes because, I don't know, made up of continuous pieces. I don't necessarily like that idea, but let's go with it. Second stop. This is, differential. is the function differentiable? All I'm really asking, can you find the derivative? Sure. G prime is, what is that? 1 minus 2 cosine of x. Does that exist? Yes. Right? No denominators, no square roots, no problems like this. So I would say exists, therefore g is differentiable on the open interval, negative pi to pi. I'm feeling good. I've established continuity. I've established differentiability. Noemi, what's your conclusion based on that? The MVT doesn't apply. Therefore, the MVT applies. Now, don't make the mistake. Don't make the mistake. I'm done. The MVT applies. No, this just says like the door is open. Now what? Where is What do we do? The MVT applies. I need to find that value of C where I need the slope of the secant equal to the slope of the tangent. And be careful with your notation here. Because I bet most of you are going to write the absolute worst thing ever. Oh, it's G. You've got to pay attention to the function name. The function is G. G. Okay? So I'm going to say, let me find G of pi. Let me find G of negative pi. Divided by pi minus negative pi. We're going to avoid doing like bad cancellation. G of pi, go back to your original function, everywhere you get an x, plug in pi, pi 
to minus 2 sine pi. If you're not sure what it is yet, we'll come back. Minus g of negative pi. Everywhere there's an x, plug in negative pi. Negative pi minus 2 sine negative pi. Divided by pi minus negative pi. We've got some ugly work to do.